I've been invited to Idaho by my friend and colleague, Dr. John Cassell of Northwest Nazarene University to participate in a reptile survey at the Orchard Combat Training Center. Before the survey can be started, the field technicians must be trained to identify reptile species in the survey area and how to safely handle rattlesnakes should they be encountered. Reptiles must be measured for length and weight, the sex must be determined, a ventral scale must be clipped for genetic identification, and a tag must be inserted under the skin. Dr. Cassell started the training by showing photographs and preserved specimens of Idaho reptile species to the field technicians. Their job was to try to identify each species from the photo and record their answers. Later, Dr. Cassell reviewed the photos with the participants and went over the key characteristics used to identify each species. <laughs> Next, Dr. Cassell showed the participants the technique for using snake tongs to safely manipulate a rattlesnake. Tubing is one of the techniques and probably it's, in my opinion, it's the best, the safest technique for venomous snakes. Free handing is just, there's no sense for it. I mean, unless you're trying to show off and in that case, you know, we don't need that. So. But, it, but with rattlesnakes, if you do have to get them in the hand uh, for the research technicians, of course, the safe way to do it is with this tube. The idea is to get a tube that's close to the right size as possible. And you'll see that it's just a whole set of nested tubes. So I don't know if you're looking at that guy thinking about what size tube. The thing is, is the body, and you guys know this about snakes, they can get through tiny holes, okay? So it'll probably compress down enough that this is good. The head for sure, it's a little big for the neck, but let's start with it and see how it goes. So if, I think for Christina's team, yeah. the protocol, if you got, it's a two person deal, one person's on one. Christina's team? Yeah. All right, there you go. One person is on the snake, and then you have a second set of tongs, okay? And again, even though the snake is, I'm gonna to try to give it some shade. Uh, even though this snake is obviously alert, it's buzzing and everything else, it's already not striking, so that's good. So Derek is doing a good job. I can see that he's not like really cranking down on the snake. So the more we keep it tranquil, the better. Now, if you come and grab right behind my tongs, there you go. You got it? Okay. And then, oops, well, try again. Okay, now let go. Now grab. Got it? You got it? Yep. Yeah, these brand new tubes you can actually see in there, so. Right, let's go one more. All right. So, <laughs> that's all there is to it. So, good job. Yeah, it's quite a bit easier. But that, that whole walking it with teamwork like that's exactly how you need to do it. So. With these guys, you're trying to get a snake, uh, a snout vent length, um, but <clears throat> it's obviously not worth the risk of getting bit to get an exact uh, length. Anyways, this is a handy dandy science tape. So even for lizards, it'll usually work pretty well, but you can kind of hold the end of the tape on the snout and then just stretch it down to the cloaca and, and get a reading. Uh, sometimes you can use calipers 
tube on lizards, but even, the, you know, it just depends on the size and, but I'm quite fond of these guys. Yeah. You want to grab it mid body and hold, there we go. And can you see? Right here. So what do you got 38 and a, Yep. Okay, well, we'll have, some of them have inches on one side and centimeters on the other, but if it isn't inches, then be sure and write that down mm -hmm. so that we can do the conversion later. But now you guys can all see where the tail begins, right? You can see the body ends and the tail begins, and that's the cloaca. Um, so that that's how you get the length of this snake. We'll go Now, do you know how to tell the sex of this snake? Well, so like on the, the rubber boa, they have small uh, spurs near the cloaca. These guys don't. But what they can, what they do have is hemipenes. So snakes and lizards, the males have these two copulatory structures. When you look at the tail, can you see the bulge where those hemipenes are located? Mm -hmm. So a lot of times if it's a female snake, it will just taper and there's, the tails are a lot of times shorter also because there's nothing down there really other than those minor scent glands. But the males have those hemipenes here. So a lot, once you get used to it, you can just look at a tail and say, oh, uh, it's a male or a female, okay? But uh, until you're sure, the one thing you can try to do is gently get the hemipenes. That's called popping the hemipenes. But the problem is there's a little muscle that pulls that hemipenis back into the tail. And sometimes that retractor muscle is quite strong. And depending, if you're trying to squeeze hard enough to get it to evert, it could actually damage it. So if, try a gentle squeeze, and if it comes out good, if not, then don't don't risk hurting the snake. Now this is not like a mammalian penis because there's no there's no uh, urethra through the middle of it. Okay, Think of it as like a sock. Two socks, right? And the retractor muscle, you would be able to reach inside that sock and pull it inside out back down into the tail. That's how it is. And then when it fills with blood, then it will evert. But the sperm is coming from the testes, which there's no scrotum, obviously. The testes are up in the abdominal pelvic region. <laughs> and the sperm just travel down grooves of those hemipenes. They don't go through the middle of it. So, If you can't get a snake to pop, and you can't tell from the tail, let me get that tucked back in. And it's like, well, I don't know what gender it is. You can buy one of these fancy probing kits from Midwest Tongs. It's got its own little pouch lubricating jelly mm -hmm. and then you got all different sizes so these little tiny ones are for like hatchling snakes okay uh, but a snake this size you could go with one of these bigger probes stainless steel you could lube it up but there's enough juice going on here and i don't think we need to worry about it um, if we're teamed up with somebody they could be doing the probing while you're holding the tail having everything set so actually you want to do the honors Yeah, you do. So the best technique is to gently put the probe, not midline because there's nothing there, but it's on either side. Now, if you stuck the probe in the cloaca and went forward, then you'd be in the rectum, right? But if you stick it in and try to gently slide, now this probe is a little bit big, oh, but okay. now can you see how the probe inside there, yeah. see it bulging right there? So that's the sock, the hemipenes, that's how far it's retracted back in. And you're just in the space of that. Okay. okay. So, but yes, yeah, it's, it's, it's really not in the cloaca. Yeah. They're on the tail off to the side. So, and you can go either side. And they won't always go quite so far in, but, but that's how it works. Now, if you don't want to spend $70 on your fancy Midwest Tom kit, then you go to Walmart for $1.80. You can buy hairpins. And <clears throat> they don't come with the KY jelly, but they do have a nice little Teflon plastic rounded knob on the end. And now you can. Maybe. 
Yep. Yeah, there you go, right there. So if it goes in like that, it's a male. Right? So that's all there is to it. With the pit tagging, I'm assuming you've all seen these tags before, but it's a little glass encased transponder, so passive integrated transponder. So one of the things that you want to do is get a reader and make sure you got the code and that the tag is functioning before you stick it in the snake. So so do we test that tag? Do we have a number on it? You got the reader? 982126. In case you don't know about pit tag technology, this is the transceiver, right? So it's sending out a signal activating the tag and uh, will send out the signal and receive the signal. If there's a tag in there, it'll give its code. But okay, no tag, so. If you saw Christina checking the back third of the snake, half of the snake, that's where we'll tag it. But it's probably smart to tag the front too, just in case the tags might check the front because the tags can migrate. So let's do that, Jen, while we got them in the tube. Okay. But when you guys have your own in the tube, you'll be able to feel that the skin is loose from the underlying musculature. So that's basically you want to pull it up away so you don't perforate the, the thoracic wall there. And your preference on which? I don't think, whatever you prefer. Okay. So you can pull the skin up loose. And you just need enough to get it through. Good. And then it's and then hopefully you can feel the tag in there. And I would massage it down away from the puncture site if you can. I can't really feel it. Make sure it's not in here. I think here. it's right there. So, and on the first several, it. what I would do just if you want the certainty is. Yep. There we go. But if you got a scale, so with data reading, I'm sure you guys and Christine will remind you, but the very first thing to do is check it and make sure it's at zero, tear it out. So you can twist it to set it to zero if you need to. And then the other thing is when you're reading these spring scales is don't I, I think the chances are pretty minimal of it making a difference, but theoretically, if you squeeze this tube, you could bind the little spring inside and you would get a false reading. Also, if you tip it, it's gonna have a little bit of drag or friction, so it may not give you an accurate reading. So it, it should dangle from the top, and then you'll get a good reading. So you can, I'll let you see if we can hook it on there. I suppose if there's, if you can't get it hooked, there we go. So, what do we got? 800. 800 grams? Yep. Pretty beefy. We start checking traps and recording data next on Great Basin Adventure.